Okay, the final thing that we need to do is the trial ballots. Now, once you've posted everything into the ledgers, let's see, okay, so here's all these accounts with all the ledger balances. I know they're really hard to see. So I'm gonna blow it up and we'll just scroll through. All right, so everything has these ending balances. So the last thing that you need to do is create a trial balance to make sure that all your debits equal all your credits. So we're basically on step number three of that accounting cycle. All right, so trial balance, um, determine or double check, I'll put double check. Double check that the dollar amount of the debits equals the dollar amount of the credits. Okay, so <clears throat> what you do for a trial balance is it has a heading very similar to the other financial statements. So it would have the company name, trial balance, and just the date. So I think December 31st is our date. I don't really know. But that's what I'm gonna put. Don't even know what day it is. <clears throat> okay, so you'd have that. Then you would have the account, the account name, and then you would have the debit, a debit column and a credit column. Now this is a working paper. It's kept inside the the business the accounting you know, with the accounting records, it's not issued to the public. So therefore it has a debit column and a credit column because you're trying to make sure that debits and credits equal out. All right, this is the only time you'll see something that has, that looks like a financial statement that has a debit and credit column. And it's because this is not in actuality a financial statement. It's just a working paper that the accountant uses to make sure they're ready to go on to the next step. Okay, that's all it is. All right, so we have, my goodness, why won't it let me have this all nice and drawn out now. So our first account, you go through. So you do all the assets first. So we have cash. It has a debit balance of 12200 Then we have accounts receivable with a debit balance of 1000 Oops, I seem to be doing that. Then office supplies with 500, prepaid rent 3,000, furniture 18,000, a building for 60. And land for 20. Another thing I want to point out is your ledger is not usually set up like the accounting equation. It would have all the assets going down through the pages, then it would have pages of liabilities, then pages for equity. All right, this is just setting it up to show you that it's in a financial statement order. All right, so then I've got accounts payable. Now you need to be careful here because accounts payable has a credit balance, so you've got to switch over to the credit side. Utilities payable of 100, unearned revenue 6, and note payable of 60. Okay, then I have Bright Capital. Still on the credit side. I have bright withdrawals. Notice that's on the debit side. And I have service revenue back to the credit. And then my expenses are going to be debits. Rent was two thousand. Salaries are thirty six hundred, and utilities are a hundred. 
Okay, so I have all the accounts listed out. Now I need to total them. All right, so I'm going to do equal sum and add up the entire column. I'm going to copy this across and I balance out, which is what I wanted. That means the total of my dollar credits equals the total of my credits. My debits equal my credits. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that I did everything correctly. I could have put something in the wrong account, but as long as my debits equal my credits, then it's still going to balance out. So it's, and that's really all the trial balance is doing, just making sure. Because if this doesn't balance out down here on the bottom, then my financial statements are not going to balance out. Okay, so now I can use this compilation to do my financial statements, all right? Because everything is in financial statement order, which makes it really nice. All right, we've got um, cash down through land. These are my assets. They go on the balance sheet. Then I have accounts payable to, down to note payable. These are my liabilities. They also go on the balance sheet. All right, I've got my equity accounts. All right, the equity accounts, they'll go on the statement of retained earnings. Well, statement of capital, but here. And then the ending balance will go to the balance sheet. All right, then I have my revenue. Or revenues, if I have more than one. All right, so this is revenue. It goes on the income statement. And then these are going to be my expenses. Gosh. And they also go on the income statement. Okay, so everything is in financial statement order and is good to go. Notice that cash is always the first asset that I, that I have up here. Okay, all right, so that takes us through. Let's see, let's make this back to home. This is what a ledger account would actually look like if you were looking at a, at a ledger. It would have four columns generally. And this first debit here is the original entry. And then you have the running balance. Okay. All right, so here's my trial balance. And then from this trial balance, you can prepare your financial statements. Everything is right here ready to go. So let's, I'm going to make this big and we're going to do the financial statements again. All right, so we've got Bright Touch, right? I'm not sure if that's what it's called, but anyway, that's what we're calling it. The first financial statement is the income statement. It's for the month ended. Actually, it's really for two months ended, right? December 31st of 2018. Not sure. You know, let's pull this back up and see what they did. Uh, two months ended 2016. Let's fix that because it's November and December. So two months ended December 31st of 2016. I'll go fix the top later before I post it. All right, so first thing up is revenue. They have service revenue. 
was 16,500. And we have expenses. We have rent expense, salary expense, and utility expense. And notice I'm going in an inside column because I'm going to add these up and get the total of these. So I'm going to add these up and get the total expenses. All right, so notice that um, I didn't put like debit or credit at the top up here, right? The columns now are simply to help us line up our numbers and make it clear what we're adding and subtracting, and that is it, okay? So now that I have my revenue and I have my total expenses, I can find my net income by subtracting. So revenue minus expenses. Okay. All right. Then the next thing I need to do is my, my statement of capital. All right. So here they have the statement of owner's equity is what they're calling it. All right. So statement of owner's equity. I'm going to just copy this down. I need my statement of owner equity. As we get going through the chapter, I get changes to a statement of retained earnings, but that's okay. It's basically the same thing. All right, so you would have bright capital, and that would be at November the 1st, okay? It's the beginning balance. And for Sheena, it's zero because she opened it, she started the business in November, so it was brand new. So her beginning capital was zero. Okay, um, then you would have contributions, and in her case, she made 48000 in contributions. I like to subtotal. Oh, we also have, I'm not done yet. <laughs> uh, so we have the contributions, and we have net income. I was forgetting about there for a second. All right, net income comes from this income statement right here. So it was 10.8. Now I'm going to subtotal. And that's all this is. This is just a subtotal. And some books do it, some books don't. I like to do it. All right, and then we're going to subtract out her withdrawals. And they were $5,000. So this is my bright capital at 1231. I'll put a couple lines just so y'all can see it. And before I post it, you know, I always post these, the Excel sheet, so you have the notes to refer to, and I'll go make it look pretty before I post it. All right, and then finally, you have the balance sheet. And I'm going to come over here and do it. So let me go ahead and just copy this. Actually, I'll just retype it. So we have Bright Touch Learning. This is the balance sheet. And on the balance sheet, it is just the date. All right, because the balance sheet really is only good on that day and that's it because at the end of tomorrow everything will be changed. So we're gonna have we're gonna do the account form, which means we're gonna make it look similar to the accounting equation and that we're gonna have assets on the left and liabilities and equity on the right. Okay. So we're gonna have assets and it's gonna be the cash, account receivable, office supplies, prepaid rent furniture, land, oh, building and land, building and land. I'm going to go ahead and wind this out. 
and then I can just put it in this column. All right, 12, 200, 1,000, 500, 3,000, 18,000, 60,000, and 20,000. All right, but you know, see how this trial balance is handy because everything is right here for me to pull from. All right, then I need to do my liabilities. I'm moving over to the right-hand side. All right, my liabilities are account payable, utilities payable, account payable, utility payable, unearned revenue, and then note payable. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and widen this out, put the numbers right here. So 200, 100, 600, and 60,000. 200, 100, 660. All right, then I need to sum those up. And put my total, so this is my total liabilities, but the title of my total. All right, then I'm gonna have equity, and it's gonna be bright, capital and it's going to come from this down here all right this capital over here this is her old capital um, or before it's been updated for retainer or for net income okay it doesn't include the revenue and expenses yet they're still down here separate so this one's been updated so I'm gonna put the 53800 and I'm gonna add those two up is my total liabilities and equity and then I'm gonna add this one up for my assets and I'm gonna hope that they add up to the same thing and they do yay and this is my total assets okay and then remember to make things pretty which would be nice you need to do some formatting so the first dollar number is usually an accounting format, which is a dollar sign. And then the last number is usually that same format. All right, now, if you don't wanna to have to do that over and over, you can come over here and double click the format painter and it will do it for you, okay? Now, the reason I have these hashtags is because the number's too wide so I can click, or I can drag that over, make it bigger, and now I can see them. All right, the rest of these need to be commas, so I'm gonna block those off, make it the comma with no decimals, and then I'm gonna format it. Well, I didn't copyright or something, I didn't do that. I double clicked too much. And this is also gonna be the same. Okay, and then I'm gonna add some lines down here. I want this one to have a single top and a double bottom. Same over here. And then right here, I would like to underline that number. So I'm gonna put just a bottom border. Okay, so you can make it look nice and pretty. This one would be a dollar on the top, a dollar on the bottom. And then in between, I'm gonna do just the comma. Okay, so anyway, we have several exercises worked out that do all this, so be sure and watch the exercise videos. And that is it for chapter two.